Hello, my name is Dave Shanley and I'm the lead engineer on the new EvoRail Hyperconverged Infrastructure Appliance. Today I'm going to give you a guided tour through the product experience. So I'm just going to go ahead and get started here and first of all I have to accept the EULA. The EvoRail does feature a Just Go option. This allows you to configure the appliance using a set of predefined variables the only thing that the appliance will ask for is passwords. However, for this demo, we're going to customize the appliance. Let's start with DNS. EvoRail comes with its own internal DNS server. This allows you to have fully qualified domain names without the need for an external DNS service. You can customize DNS by setting a host name, separator, iterator, and a top level domain. Any changes that you make will be reflected in real time. So let's move on and configure our networking. You have control of your ESXi, vMotion, Virtual SAN, vCenter server and your VM networks. To keep things simple, you don't have to edit each individual IP address. Instead, you create a network pool with a beginning and an ending IP. This allows EvoRail to allocate IP addresses to groups of hosts. The minimum size of the IP address pool is 4. This is because there are 4 hosts on a single appliance. If you plan on extending your EvoRail cluster at a later date, then you should increase your pool size by 4 IP addresses per appliance that you plan to add to the cluster. You'll notice that there are no save buttons. This is because every change that you make is saved and validated in real time. When your configuration doesn't quite look right, EvoRail will tell you exactly what the problem is and tell you where to go to fix it by using red orbs in the categories and highlighting each of the fields. You can have as many VM networks as you like. Each VM network can be configured with a name and a VLAN ID. The only passwords that EvoRail requires you to configure are those for your vCenter server administrator account and your ESXi host root account. EvoRail does not store these passwords. Globals are settings that apply to absolutely everything inside the appliance. This includes your hosts and your vCenter server. Logging is really simple. All you need to do to configure it is supply an IP address. We've already predefined the host name in your DNS. EvoRail will handle the installation and configuration of the product for you, as well as the licensing so there really is nothing more for you to do. We've included a couple of really useful features, like being able to upload an existing configuration file, so you don't have to spend time filling out all of the fields. The other is to be able to download the support logs. Once you're happy with your configuration, you can validate it. This process takes a closer inspection on all of your settings and makes sure that the configuration is valid and will work on the appliance. So off we go. Now we're building the appliance. This is where a lot of the really heavy lifting is being performed by EvoRail. The UI tells you exactly how much of the process has been completed. It also shows you exactly which task is being executed. There are four main stages. As we progress, the UI shows you exactly where we are in the process. The first two stages involve installing and configuring DNS as well as unpacking and configuring the vCenter server appliance. Once the initial setup has been performed, EvoRail moves on to configuring the ESXi hosts. The ESXi hosts have not been configured. They don't even have an IP address. Normally, you'd have to use a console or an out-of-band management system to be able to configure these hosts. However, we've engineered our own implementation of zero-conf networking and we baked it right into the very core of the Evo Rail. This allows the Evo Rail to be able to locate, connect to, and configure all of the hosts inside the appliance. It also means that Evo Rail appliances can recognize and locate each other. Evo Rail is cleaning up and putting things away, getting everything ready to start. And it's really that simple. Evo Rail is now fully configured and ready to start creating virtual machines. Okay, so let's go and take a look at the EvoRail management interface. 
First of all, I should point out that EvoRail does not have its own database. It's been built on top of the vCenter and ESXi APIs. And here we are. So let's take a quick look at our health. It's easy to consume and evaluate EvoRail storage performance from both a physical and provision viewpoint, as well as an IOPS perspective. You can quickly get a sense of how your appliance is performing by looking at the CPU, memory and storage utilization. Let's go ahead and create our very first VM. The next step is to upload a guest OS ISO from your local file system or you can mount it from a remote file system via NFS or SIFS. But it just so happens that I've already got my own guest OS ISO that I've already downloaded. Once selected and uploaded, it's copied over to the Virtual Sand Data Store. Once that's done, you have to select the guest OS type. Moving on, next up I'm asked to select a size specification for the VM. They are small, medium and large. These specifications are not static. They're sensitive to the guest OS type that you pick. Next, we can select which networks we want our new VM to be connected to. You can select as many as you like. Next, we get to pick a security policy. These are actually risk profiles that have been taken from our own vSphere security hardening guide. Each profile is a collection of advanced virtual machine settings. So I'm going to pick a default policy. And that's all it takes. Now we're ready to create and start the VM. But before we start, let's give it a name. The UI provides a summary of the specification you've created. There's also a progress indicator, showing you how much of the process has been completed. And we're done. And that was pretty simple, I think you'll agree. Going back to the dashboard, we'll show our new VM has been created and it's powering on. Once the VM is on, you can click on it to get more options. You can jump straight into the console. To give you a taste of how the EvoRail UI simplifies VM management, I'm going to rename this VM and let's be creative here. There, perfect. So it tells me it's doing something and also shows me the progress of that task. And it's done. The VM has a great new name. This time, I'm going to clone my VM. I can give it a new name or I can use the one provided. I can also decide if I want the VM to power on once it's cloned. Cloning takes a little longer than renaming. So the progress bar shows its value here. Sometimes we don't want to wait, so clicking anywhere outside the VM will collapse it back down. Once it's been cloned, it'll pop up on the dashboard, and you can start using it like any other VM. Upgrading and patching is easy. You can update any component of either Rail or vSphere with no VM downtime. We've made it really simple. All it takes is a few clicks. Simply pick your targets, upload them, select those you want to upgrade and off you go. And we're done. The next thing we're going to do is add a new appliance. I'm going to show you just how easy this is. I have here a brand new appliance straight from the factory and a few moments ago I powered on each of the hosts. As each host comes up, they start the beacon. Your existing appliance will recognize the new appliance coming online. So here we get to see all of the IP address pools that we created when we configured the appliance. They're broken down by each of our networks. The only other thing I'm asked to do is put in the administrator passwords for both vCenter server and ESXi. Once I press add appliance, EvoRail will take full control and configure everything for me in a completely automated manner. This process takes about six minutes. And because it's completely automated, I don't have to worry about it. Ah, looking good. Almost done. Ah, and now we are. And that's all there is to it. We started out with a standalone Evo Rail appliance, and now we have a two appliance cluster. And so, that's about it from me. I do hope you've enjoyed your guided tour around VMware's new Evo Rail hyperconverged infrastructure appliance. My name is Dave Shanley, and I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.